Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to be going over um, the lighting tools in uh, Photoshop 3D and uh, I only uh, went over uh, lights in my uh, previous tutorial but I felt that there were a lot of things that I left uncovered so I'm going to go over th those now and uh, Photoshop actually has a lot of uh, interesting uh, ways to uh, use lights uh, it's uh, a lot different than a regular 3D program, uh, but there's a lot of uh, cool ways to interact with it. So, uh, I'll bring over my uh, uh, document here. And I have this uh, little stickman dude that I uh, created using uh, some shapes that I extruded and then uh, put this checkerboard texture over it. So if we uh, grab our light here and you can see that we can just move it around by uh, grabbing this and we can Select our uh, light one of two ways, either by clicking on here or grabbing this icon and that will select our light. Uh, light. Yes. So, uh, another way that we can move our light around is just by shift left clicking and uh, we can just very easily move our uh, shadow <laughs> uh, instead of directly moving our light. So uh, when we create uh, a new Photoshop uh, 3D environment uh, the basic light is this infinite light here and an infinite light is essentially a light that is uh, uh, that acts as if it's coming from very far away like the sun and uh, so the uh, light hits everything in the, s s s uh, in the scene at the same angle and um, we go into our coordinates, we can see that the, uh, the position of this uh, light is that it essentially has no position. It's, uh, it's only affected by rotation. And we can also uh, go to a spotlight and so our spotlight is just a light with a cone that uh, uh, basically produces a spotlight effect so uh, I'm going to have to go into coordinates and reset the wrong coordinates yes yeah, so it's uh, starts out from very far away because that's like where our infinite light is and 
and move my camera back. Okay, so I want to go into top view to position this, and we'll drag this back. And so there we go. Uh, we have our kind of spotlight. And if I can grab the rotation, we can just rotate this light around. Going to rotate my camera a bit so that I can see the controls a bit better. And my rotate. Yeah. So, uh, something that's unique to the spotlights are the hotspot and the cone values. So we can increase this value or decrease it. And this will adjust the size of the area where the light is hitting. And then this uh, this hotspot controls the uh, feather or the uh, fall off of the light within this cone. And then below we have the light fall off. So these are really small. And so what's happening, I can see this better. Switch the perspective view. Okay. I can grab these areas here and should be able to move them around like that and so uh, it's hard to see because we only have one object in our scene but we're getting some fall off effects from this light and of course we can uh, adjust our cone angle and hotspot uh, just by manipulating them in the view here yeah okay so turn that off for now and then our last type of light is this point light and uh, a way to think of a point light is it's almost an inverse infi infinite light uh, so unlike an infinite light a point light only has a uh, position went to this you can see that it actually does have uh, 
rotation values, but these uh, this rotation uh, basically has no effect. And I need to stop doing that. Hmm, for some reason, uh, moving the camera has gotten very slow. Sorry about that. So, anyway, ah, uh, yes. So, Let me uh, grab our point light again, coordinates, and uh, just reset these uh, to zero. Might take a minute. But as you can see, the uh, the lighting in our uh, scene does not change. And so let me try going to the point light like here, top view. Okay, so we have our our light. And so if I just move this around, uh we can uh just have this uh light emit uh, illuminate our entire scene. And so uh, we don't have to worry about um, the uh, cone uh, pointing uh, uh, pointing at what we want to have illuminated. Uh, we can just move this around, and it will always. Uh, always uh, light up our scene uh, in front and back yeah uh, hang on while I uh, pause this video and try to sort sort out the uh, performance now I've uh, reset the, the, the camera and uh, deleted the second light uh, that we had in our scene. So uh, it seems to be working fine now. Uh, okay, so I can just drag this light wherever I want. And 
move back on the Z some. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one other thing is uh, our shadow control, so we can turn those on and off, and we can turn up the set the softness. So, wanted to get a little uh, some soft shadows, and then we can render this. So there we have our. Stickman rendered out, and if I go over here and uh, do rasterize 3D, uh, we can see our render there, and I'll just quickly say this out as Stickman. Render. And then go back to our 3D view. Alright. And so we've covered all the different types of lights that we have available. Uh, we can also go through these presets. Uh, we have these blue lights, so we have, it's created these three different lights for us, there's uh, blue light, and then more like a fill light, and then this light from below. And we can just easily change this if we wanted uh, more of a dawn look. We have this uh, warm light coming from the side. Uh, well, kind of from in front to the side. And then uh, kind of 90 degrees opposite of that is... Uh, this uh, blue light that's more like the ambient. Uh, we also have this fire. And of course we can customize this if we uh, want a little different color. Want to make this more intense. Uh, this uh, Mardi Gras preset is pretty interesting. Uh, we have some green, some yellow, some purple, I think. Purple or pink. And then it also does a pretty good job of creating a night scene. So, uh, that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I hope you'll check out some more of my videos.